going on everybody toby wan shinobi here and today i'm going to arm you with the best strategies and tactics to win more games consistently in chapter 4 season 4 of fortnite zero build now there have been some pretty big changes this season that have brought in some powerful new strategies i'm going to go ahead and break those down for you to show you how to win more games consistently by stacking advantages let's get into it now i gotta say that this season is a lot more action oriented mobility items are much more common vehicles are more common and the loot pool is much more balanced i personally like it a lot but i know that some players are struggling with the new meta and the changes so i'm going to try to help you out the best i can by giving you a short list of strategies you can implement to begin having a lot more success in fortnite zero build and win games consistently let's start off with the new forecast towers that have been added to the game which might be one of the most powerful mechanics added this entire chapter these are radio towers that are activated with a boss key card Card and allow you to always see the next safe zone circle for the rest of the game, which is incredibly powerful for end game positioning and rotations. On top of that, the mini boss that you kill to get the key card drops two legendary slurps for each teammate and a legendary twin mag assault rifle, which is by far the best assault rifle in the game right now that is in the regular loot pool, mythics not included. We'll get to optimal loadout soon, but if you kill these forecast tower bosses, you now have two of the best items in the game, which are legendary slurps and a legendary twin mag AR. The radio tower bosses don't spawn in at the start of the game. Instead, they spawn exactly at the one minute mark of storm phase two. When your map storm progress reads storm two of 12 with one minute left, and the stopwatch icon is showing. This is usually right around the six and a half minute mark of the game. Now, in order to ensure that you get to these towers first, you need to keep an eye out for the towers ahead of time during your drop. And that's because their location is not initially shown on the map. There are only six possible locations for the towers shown here. Three towers spawn each game. Once storm phase two hits with a minute left, then the towers are revealed on the map. But you wanna be at one before they're revealed so that you can eliminate the boss, get the gold twin mag AR and legendary slurps and then quickly use the key card on the tower before anyone else arrives. So keep an eye on your storm timer and rotate at the right time. Also when you defeat the boss make sure that you are in good cover and you aren't standing out in the open because a lot of enemies will be coming into these locations. Now having the next zone shown at all times can be a huge benefit to setting up in the right position in end game circles and making the game very easy for yourself. But in order to take full advantage of that you need the proper loadout. Okay. Okay, I'm about to hit you with something very heavy here. Baby Ryu is feeling pretty down right now, and he asked if you'd kindly consider smashing that like button to cheer him up. You did it! Thank you. Uh, he really liked that. All right, back to it. I want to make a note about the shotgun meta shift really quick. I know a lot of players are having a hard time winning their close range and medium range fights. This is because the drum shotgun and the havoc pump are no longer in the game and they've been replaced with shotguns that require more accuracy and consistency throughout a fight. Last season, a lot of players would get away with barrel stuffing an opponent in a 50-50 fight with a drum shotgun or hitting a big havoc pump and then finishing quickly with a secondary. These new shotguns have greatly reduced maximum damage with a trade-off of less spread and more range. Simply put, they reward good accuracy and tactics. This means that typically the player with a better positioning, aim, and use of their inventory is going to win most close range fights. So it's more important than ever to learn to use good cover, positioning, and master your weapon swapping. I highly recommend watching my how to win 1v1s video to see the full breakdown of what I mean. Okay, let's talk about loadouts. To win the end game more consistently, you really want to carry double equipment, which usually means you are running a two gun loadout. This allows you to carry porta bunkers and shockwaves or an alternative piece of equipment. I believe the best two gun loadout is a twin mag AR and an exotic Maven shotgun. The exotic Maven shotgun can actually be purchased from the Love Ranger NPC at the top of Rumble Ruins for 400 gold and up to five of them can be bought in a match, which is just crazy. But personally, I usually just run a high 
Rarity Infiltrator Shotgun with a Twin Mag AR. Then I carry four bunkers, six shockwaves, and two legendary slurps. I use the Infiltrator Shotgun because it's easy to find, has a very fast fire rate for a pump shotgun, and doesn't really require a spray weapon if you're using good cover. It also has very good range when aiming down sights and a nice magazine size. I use the Twin Mag AR because it's easily the best assault rifle in the game right now. It has perfect long range scoped accuracy, excellent damage output, and is very flexible. It even hip fires pretty well in a pinch. The Twin Mag AR becomes even deadlier with the augment of scoped salvo and first assault. These perks make your first bullet in a magazine do extra damage and slow down your fire rate while increasing your overall damage per bullet. This new AR is probably my favorite assault rifle of all time in Fortnite. It's like an MK and a red eye assault rifle had a beautiful little baby. Now the easiest way to get high rarity weapons is from the forecast towers, combat caches, or hollow chests that you use keys for. And if you want the strongest shotgun in the game, just head to Rumble Runes and buy the exotic maven from the NPC. This season, I've been starting the game with a three gun loadout that uses either an SMG or a sniper. And once we get below 20 players, I start looking for bunkers. This is just my personal preference because I like to play in high action at the beginning of the game and use a combat SMG for crazy mid range damage. But you might want to just adopt the two gun loadout earlier in the game. If you're carrying four bunkers and six shockwaves in the end game, and you know exactly where the next safe zone circle is going to be, it becomes very easy to set up a strong defense in the final safe zones and force people to push you with the storm at their back. And now you might be asking, how can I get this equipment consistently? So let's cover that. My favorite augment this season by far is on the go bag, which instantly drops some form of mobility item once you select it, but far better, you get mobility items from every single container you open. That includes ammo boxes, produce boxes, chests, coolers, you name it. You have a chance of either getting two shockwaves, two slap splashes, or two jump pads with every single container you open, which is absolutely insane. With this perk, I can pretty much guarantee to have six shockwaves after looting a small area every single game. So this is the perk I always go for first. And with this perk, if you get in a pinch and you need heals, you can open containers and have a very good chance of getting slap splashes every time. If you need shockwaves at any time, you can always purchase them from Kabi Lame at the castle near the racetrack track for 36 gold for a stack of two, which is a pretty great deal and guarantees you as many as you need. If you land at Brutal Bastion, you can also hire the Royal Bomber NPC who will give you a stack of whatever equipment item you are holding out about every minute. This can be great for staying stocked on bunkers, bush bombs, and shockwaves. Now, if you weren't able to eliminate the forecast tower boss or you've run out of legendary slurps, keep an eye out for combat caches right at the beginning of the third storm phase. You and one other enemy team will each be able to spot a single combat cache on the map and it will be equidistant from both teams. If you catch the cache early while it's gold, you can get legendary weapons. If you catch it on any other color, you'll still get the legendary slurp juices plus whatever color weapons the cache beam of light is. So just remember that you want to look at your map twice in the early game. Once during storm phase two at the one minute remaining mark for the forecast towers and once again during the beginning of storm phase three for combat caches. All right, once you got storm forecast going from the forecast tower and you've got a great end game loadout it's incredibly important to rotate to the next zone early and find a good position to set up when there are less than 10 players you should just be focusing on zone and positioning if you really want to win plan out good rotations to get to the next zone safely and preferably without anyone knowing you're moving there. Be ready to shockwave onto the next circle's high ground and set up there immediately. If you get there first, it will be very hard for anyone to contest you because you have high ground, bunkers, shockwaves, and slurps. You basically get to bully anyone who tries to push you. And if someone else has the best position in the final zones, you might consider trying to get them out of it using your equipment and weapons and then taking it for yourself but don't put yourself at too much risk doing so. And do not burn all of your equipment in the end game. Try to preserve it as best as possible until you really need it. For instance, try to use unbreakable cover like high ground terrain instead of a porta bunker. The last thing I'll note is that your personal playstyle and patience is largely going to determine how much action you get into and your overall win rate. I personally like getting into combat often because I find it fun, but you should realize that with every engagement you take, Take, you are risking losing the game. So if you're really win focused, you want to plan rotations that avoid risky situations and groups of enemies. So a place like Loot Island is probably not a place you want to be near at all, even though the mythic infiltrator shotgun
shotgun's pretty great, it's not worth risking your life for it if you're trying to win. And if you feel like you need to improve your combat skills, make sure to check out my must watch zero build playlist on my channel. I'm going to link it at the end of this video. And if you want to take your training to the next level, consider joining the Shinobi clan as a master level member to get access to the private discord and hands on training three days a week for myself and other Shinobi clan members. Go ahead and click the link in the description for more info. Thank you for watching this video. Now go get that sweet victory royale. Shinobi out.